Well, hi folks. Um, <coughs> my name is Colin, and I am going to try and teach you, or show you anyway, a, um, a method that I use to paint miniatures. Um, this is uh, in lieu of the fact that we cannot see each other in person at the convention, uh, which I'm very sad about because <coughs> that's always a great time. Um, anyway, I just want to give you a brief overview. I'm going to be taking a, a, a Bones miniature. This is Bones Black, the newer Bones. Um, but the method that I'm going to show you is basically the same for all miniatures. Um, and I'll show you some other pieces that I've uh, started along the way. And, um, and we'll take it from there. So the very first thing that I always do uh, whenever I open up a package for miniatures is um, I want to look real careful. This particular one is called uh, Isabel and Rufus. Um, so she is a bard, it looks like. Yeah, she's playing some kind of a guitar thingy. And um, with a long sword and a shield. Pretty cool, actually, mini. And she has a dog. I guess that's her pet or whatever they want to do it. And it's got nice bases, so it's a, it's a pretty decent mini. It's one of their newest ones. Um, I just picked it up. Anyway, um, <coughs> all of these, the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the detail. I want to see and think about what part of the miniature I want what color. And I want to analyze it. Well, as I'm doing that, I'm actually um, going through this, my first step. I, I take black paint and um, the, these are uh, the Master Series paints uh, from Reaper, um, and uh, I, I, I just have a collection of different colors I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, so I, I take a soft uh, brush, and uh, not too small, not too big, and I, and I just put it right, and I just stipple it right in, just poke it right in, and uh, I want to get the entire miniature painted with this black. Um, I do this for two reasons. Um, the main reason is I want a dark base coat of kind of like a primer, although these miniatures don't need primer. Uh, this is one brand that uh, it's already ready to paint. That's why I just started right with the acrylic. I didn't have to put on um, any kind of other base coat. So I'm, I'm going to use this as a, a, a primer anyway, but not in the sense that you need it to help paint stick. So the reason, and I, let me, I, I digress a little bit, but the reason that we put primer on a, a plastic model is because plastic typically does not allow acrylic paint or water-based paint to stick. It doesn't adhere to it. So we spray it, plastic models, with an enamel spray. And that's the best way to do a, a, a base coat. When the enamel spray sticks to the plastic and dries, it then gives you a surface that you can paint acrylic paints onto. So that's the reason we usually do that. But there's another reason that I use a base coat like this and more specifically I use a black base coat. <coughs> now I don't always but 99% of the time I use a black base coat. Um, sometimes I'll use a darker gray or something like that but anyway that the, the reason is is because of shadow. Whenever you see an object in the real world it has highlights and shadows and so you want to have um, something that represents those things. So when your paint is going to be that something, you need to um, make sure that you start from the inside out. And so by putting a black paint over the entire miniature, really just getting it all in, um, then letting it dry, and go ahead and do her dog too, um, you're putting the first layer of paint you're actually creating the shadows and that's important because when you are painting 
and working, like I said, from the inside out, you're going to go from darker to lighter. Um, and that makes sense in the real world. You, if, if you just look at a piece of clothing or something sitting around you, any object, three-dimensional object, you'll see that the, the areas that are in sunlight or in um, artificial light are brighter than the areas that are in the shadows. And the shadows always, if they're very deep shadows, you can't tell what color something is if it's in a deep shadow. Um, it's just too dark. The light doesn't reflect. And so the same thing happens. What you want to do is replicate that with paint. And so we do is, or I do, you paint it f first all black and that's putting your first base coat on. Um, and it's a great way to have that um, deep dark shadow effect when you need it. It's already there. So I'm going to let those guys dry for a few minutes and um, clean off my, my brush a little bit. And um, just as a, a quick note, I have, I have a, uh, a cream cheese container. You get a top that has great for a palette, and you get the bottom part, which is great to hold water in. And you want to constantly clean your brush, and when you clean your brush, you shake it around in the water, and you drag it across a, a, a soft tissue or a paper towel, and always pull it through and maybe twist it a little bit. And these, these paint brushes, they, depending on the quality, they will last longer than others, but you want to keep your, your uh, bristles in a uh, healthy state so you um, you keep you, you uh, tra train them and you uh, you wash them and smooth them and you just go throughout the process like that and you try and keep them as long as possible all right while we're waiting for the two miniatures to dry I want to show you again some of the paints that I have so what I've done is I've collected the um, the rainbow basically we have Roy G Biv um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and instead of indigo or violet, just the basic purple. It's, it's um, fine. Um, you can make some of those colors because they have the secondary colors too. You may remember yellow and blue make green. Uh, same kind of thing, or uh, blue and red make purple. But it's nice to have them ready-made. Uh, next, I want to have my, uh, my uh, black and white. What happened to my white? Okay, my white disappeared. Here it is. So I have my black and white. Um, of course, very important. And you can make different shades of gray with that. Then I have my... Um, I, I guess they're called skin tones. Um, but they're from dark brown to medium brown to a Caucasian flesh. which And I can mix and match. And using other of my colors, I can make any kind of flesh tone I want. Um, then uh, finally I've got this, well not finally, but silver and gold because for you know, different types of metallic finishes and um, unless you're very good and you can make non-metallic finish but silver and gold pre-painted why, why, why reinvent the wheel when it's already there but you know some people who are really professional painters they will do things that make it look like metal but it's not, it's called uh, non-metallic paint or non-metallic metals, N, M, N, I think that's what they call it. Anyway, and then you have, uh, this is actually from another company, pa Army Painter. So um, they um, they make a great flesh, flesh wash, and uh, I use that to bring out details and highlights at the end. Um, so, yeah, so these are my, my paints. Um, some of the other things I have on hand, I have super glue, because later I'm going to flock the base. Actually, these bases are really nice. They have, like, a cobblestone effect but I may still put little tufts of grass or sand and so flocking means that you're just covering it with sand or turf or something. I um, Get get yourself some Tamiya putty. I use white because it's easy to, to see what I'm doing. Um, this dries out if you don't keep it closed so you open it up, you take a little bit out, close it and then you smear it and it starts to dry almost immediately but it's great for filling gaps especially with the larger models you want to have you're going to have gaps when when you have pieces that you put them together or if they have seams um then then this is really great for those areas 
Uh, a good sharp blade. I like this particular handle. It's made by Exacto. It's nice and soft rubber, and it, it, it easy um, to get the blade in and out. You screw the bottom, and it opens it up. So it's a really very er er ergon ergonomic, I guess, with the, the way the shape is. Excellent. Um, anyway, get yourself some blades and a nice handle or whatever you're used to, whatever you like. Because you want to clean off flash lines and you want to touch up little spots, this is very important to have. Um, some sandpaper maybe or emery cloth, S similar thing for as the X-Acto knife, but the X-Acto knife is much better in my opinion. Um, then I also get, I, I go ahead and I collect different types of gravel and sand and rocks and I put it into like a some sort of a box that has um, different compartments and so there's different colored sands and things like that and I also buy my own uh, the ones that so I don't have to make this is very good quality um, model railroaders swear by this stuff they, they've been using woodland scenics forever and uh, so this is little clumps of green foam and it's great to take one or two pieces just to highlight and I'll probably put one on one of these bases here it just and this look at the size of this container I mean it, it'll last me for a hundred years so th those are some of the things that I have that I'm ready and I and I start with my my project with I'm ready to, to do now believe it or not my uh, minis are just about dry I'm just looking for any shiny parts but they are they look like they're just about dry so the very next step that I do when I paint is I'm going to take some Caucasian flesh um, or a tan or a um, orangish brown or something like that a, a light but not white and I and I take this color and um has some brown in there from yesterday actually I saved this um, anyway so I take this and I take most of the paint off of the top uh, on, I mean off of my brush and I and I actually want to have almost no paint so I wipe it off and and then using not sure exactly how much paint is still on there I'm gonna just touch the, the, the base I'm just gonna drag it over and I just want to see how much paint comes off and notice how I'm not letting the paint get into the little cracks I want it to go onto the surface and so this brings out the detail and I'm just buffing it back and forth and and this process is called dry brushing where you have almost no paint and you're just buffing the paintbrush back and forth over whatever area you're, you're doing. Now there's two reasons when I, why I do this. One is I want to see the detail of the piece now just by doing that suddenly you can see that w what this musical instrument guitar like thing is that she's holding it just the detail just jumps out and her, her face right now is totally black if I hit it a few times with this it just starts to, to show and I, I don't go into the place where the eyes are I don't I don't stipple it like I did with the black I'm, I'm dragging it across back and forth in kind of a buffing motion and it's just starting to make the details of this figure jump out. Alright, um, let me see if I can get some light. It might be a little bit better. Um, so I continue this process and um, just a little bit of paint and add it on and then um, as I go through it I'm, um, I'm bringing out the surface details and to be able to see the detail is essential for later when I start adding my real color okay so it's very important to have um, the the detail easy to see another reason is it's literally giving me a base of lighter colors to work on so if I add my color later to any part of this miniature the lighter p colors that I've just dry brushed on will actually make the color that I'm going to choose 
brighter in those places and where the color that I choose hits the black areas it'll make it darker so the dark and the light will affect my later color choices uh, another way to say is if I put blue on this whole miniature right now if I don't just coat it with it but just put a gentle coating of blue on it color the areas that it, the blue is on top of the black it'll look dark blue and the areas where the blue is on top of the, this fleshy color that are on the highlights will look light blue now I'm not going to do that because I don't want the whole thing to be the same color but but the point is is that you want to have this dark and light not only to show the detail which now it just jumps out and you can see the detail of this figure but you can with um, the color next it's going to affect how the, the following the colors that I put on now that I'm going to put on next will look now <clears throat> I'm going to put her on the side I'm going to go ahead and quickly do her dog um, and again I'm just going to uh, dry brush it and I I don't want to go uh, it's really important not to use a lot of paint I do not want to cover the whole thing in this in this Caucasian tan brown look because that's defeating the purpose of of having the black underneath it I, I want it to um, show the detail and um, and I want to have the highs and the lows the darks and the, and the lights now I just noticed something as I'm painting this that I hadn't noticed before and it's a really good time to talk about this as well after I've done this you can see now the fur that actually is ha does have highlights whoever sculpted this they made fur a look um, and there's lines of it and I'm, I'm gonna leave those highs and darks and lows and um, but I don't know if you can see with the video but right down the back of this dog there's a, a flash line a mold line so when they make the mold to create these it's a sandwich and where they pull it apart there's going to be a seam and they usually try and make it clean but a lot of times they just they just can't get that perfect and so as a modeler you don't want unless you like the look I don't know why you would but you, you don't want these lines that don't look natural and so I'm going to take this is where I use my blade I'm going to take my blade my exacto blade or whatever brand you use and I'm going to slowly scrape away that line that flash line it's called flat uh, flash is the, uh, the extra plastic that's not wanted I'm going to scrape it away now don't be afraid to go ahead and use the point of your blade after you've done this actually I see some more along the ears but, um, while I'm doing this I just and I and, I, and again I'm digressing but this is the other reason why I use the black and then the light on top of it because it makes all those details jump out as well as these flash lines that we don't want so um, after I've removed them all I want to go back and touch up the sculptor because the sculpt when I've done this I've, I've not only removed the flash line but I've removed some of the fur lines so I'm going to go ahead and take and carefully scrape little lines into the fur again so that it, it doesn't look like a smooth spot where I scraped away the flash line so I'm, I'm kind of like going with the fur and, and we're on the tail I'm, I'm, I'm scraping it away the plastic and I'm actually um, carefully re replacing the missing fur lines or the details that I that I did and um, this is this is another um, aspect of modeling painting um, you you should really study your your subjects um, know what a dog looks like know what a musical instrument looks like know what the person's the different parts of an anatomy of a person are and what looks natural and what doesn't um, I would recommend anybody who's going to get into the painting miniatures to learn how to draw first uh, learn how to um, put a person in different positions 
it'll help out immensely as you um, uh, do your painting. Um, and at some point you may want to just do your own sculpting. I don't know if that's for you or not, but that's something that I really like to do. Um, anyway, let me go ahead and get back and put a little bit more of the paint that I took away. And I'm going to hit some of the areas again a little bit light. Um, he's going to have a different color, uh, this dog, he or she, whatever she, is, whatever it is. She's going to, he or she is going to have a different color, so I'm just going to, I might, I might, I don't know exactly what, but right now it's a, it's a kind of a, a tan color, which it looks pretty good already, but I'm going to do some detail. It has a collar on it, and um, we'll, we'll do some detail. So, but I wanted to make sure that you understood about the flash lines and how to get rid of them. And I'll touch it up some more. Right now it still looks like he has a white line, almost like a skunk. So I, I'm going to definitely change that. But my paint here is just about dried out. So before it totally dries out, let me just see if I can do something on the top here. Get rid of, the line, make rid of that skunk looking line down the back of the dog. Um, anyway, so now that I've got her or him a little bit more uh, realistic looking. That's what the, you know. That's what it's all about: making a realistic looking miniature. Um, <clears throat> so, no longer do I have a, a an artificial looking plastic mold line down the back. All right. Now, um, here's the other one that I started with before. Um, I'm actually not going. to, This is a pretty complicated miniature. It has going to take a lot of steps and. Uh, I don't want you to sit here for four hours while I paint this. So what I did was I started a couple of other ones, some dwarfs that were actually from Nolzer's Marvelous Minis. They're, I think they're WizKids. Um, and I did the same thing. This is the same uh, step so far as this. I did the black and then dry brush the tan. Um, and uh, him, I didn't make it. Uh, I, I I didn't make it as detailed, and so it's a little bit uh, not not as many details come out right away. I put a little more gray on it than I than I anticipated, and I'll go back and touch it up. But it's they're both about the same place. Whereas this one, I started now to add the flesh tones. So this is the one I'm going to continue with this dwarf um, barbarian dude. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I I, I, I remember I said I work from the inside out. So I'm going to go ahead and um, continue with the. Uh, the the color the adding of the color I added the flesh already and then this guy has like boots and a, a skirt that looks like um, looks like leather studded leather and then heavy uh, shoulder pads which look like metal um, and and then he's got a beard but a bald head <coughs> and a mu and a cool mustache so I'm gonna go ahead and and work on the different details and. I'm thinking as I go what colors I want it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some brown. I'm going to take some of the dark brown and um, I'm going to take a smaller bris brush and load it up with some paint and I'm going to go ahead and carefully start to paint his boots this brown as well as the axe handle which is just a little bit showing so that's not a big deal but it, I wanted everything to be done so I'm trying to be very careful and purposeful so I go ahead and I'm painting the boots um, I'm also going to go ahead and paint the leather of the studded leather skirt the same brown color As I'm painting, I'm looking and studying the miniature, um, constantly trying to figure out what it is that I see here, what details and what colors they should be. Okay. Um, let's see, it looks like he has some sort of an armband on near the top. Puts looks like a leather strap across here, or armband or something. So I'll touch that up with some of that. 
and he's got probably a metal bracelet, kind of uh, almost like a a bracer, but more like a bracelet. Um, the um, the the leather that holds everything together going around his back 